In this video, we're going to talk about how to deal with unbalanced classes. So I've opened up some data here. Uh, this is psychological experiment data from the UCI repository. If you look in the video description, you'll find a link to it. I've put it into an ARF format so we could open it up here in Weka. And there's three classes here. Uh, and you can see in our little visualization here, we have like the teal aqua one on the top. We have a blue one on the bottom. And then this red stripe in the middle is actually our third class. And so what you can see is that the data is really dominated by the teal and the blue classes. There's very few instances of the red class. What that means is that if we go ahead and try to run classification on this, so let's just do a naive Bayes classifier, it looks like we get really good results, right? They're 91% correctly classified. But if we come and look at the confusion matrix, you can see that our actual instances of that red class, class B, zero of them were actually classified as B. In fact, nothing was classified as B. Nothing was put into that red class. All the actual instances of that class were misclassified as either A or C. And you can understand why that happens, right? so much of the data is in the other classes that it doesn't make any sense in terms of getting good numbers, getting good accuracy numbers to put something in the B class. Just ignore those, treat them as your error, and train basically on the other two classes. But that's not really satisfying for building a model. If you want to be able to recognize that middle class and have a model that's good at it, uh, you need to have those instances at least part of the time and with decent accuracy appear in their own class. And right now we're not getting that. You can see that played out more in the statistics here, the detailed accuracy by class. For our class B, we can't even compute some of these statistics because nothing ended up in there. Our recall is zero. Um, our, area, our rock area under the curve is 0.558, which frankly is a little bit generous. So this is not okay. How do you deal with this? How do you handle your data if there's one class that's really underrepresented? So there are ways to do this where you sample differently. So you would pull a sample of your data that has a more balanced distribution. But in this case, our data file is not huge. We don't want to throw out a lot of our data. So the other way that we can do it is with a cost-sensitive classifier. And basically what we're going to do is increase the penalty for misclassifying an instance of B. So you get a small penalty for misclassifying A or C, our big classes, but if you misclassify a B, there's a really big penalty. So you can do that directly in Weka. We're going to stay in the Classify tab, and under Classifiers, we're going to choose under Meta this cost-sensitive classifier. Now, by itself, that's not going to do anything. Uh, you can run it, but it's not actually handling our problem. So you have to click on the text here, and this is something that I think is always a little uh, strange in Weka. Like, that seems like a label, but you actually can click on it. And when you do, it brings up this set of options. So the main things that we want to look at here, first, what classifier do we want to use? So this is the main classifier we're going to run. We were using Naive Bayes before, so let's pick that again. But the way that we're actually going to deal with the class imbalance is in the cost matrix here. This is where we specify what the penalty is for putting an item in the wrong class. So right now it says a one by one cost matrix. We're going to just click on that text and it'll bring up this little pop-up window. In the box here we want to put how many classes we have. So there's three. And if we click resize, it gives us this expanded matrix here. I'm going to move our windows around a bit because this matrix corresponds to the confusion matrix down here on the bottom. So our first cell here, this is if we have an instance of class A and it's classified as class A, then we give no penalty, which of course makes sense. This is if we have a member of class A that's misclassified as B and that's misclassified as C. So that's what our first row is. Our second row is where we're concerned. These are members of class B, and this is the penalty for putting them in class A the penalty for putting them in class C. We want to increase that penalty. You can play around with these numbers. I tend to find in my experience like really doing this, um, they tend to fall between 1 and 10. Um, so 1 is obviously the default. Sometimes I'll just bump them up to like 1.5. I'll do a small increase and that'll help. Uh, sometimes they put it all the way up to 10. You just want to experiment with it to see what kind of thing is going to give you the best results. For now, let's make them really big. 10 is a pretty big penalty. What we're basically saying here is that if you put B in the wrong class, 
it's going to be 10 times as bad if you put an item of A in the wrong class. And so the penalties that your algorithms are building up are going to be much higher for misclassifying instances of B. Uh, we're going to leave it the same for C because overall that's been performing fine. It's not underrepresented. And so when we're done with that, when we filled in those values, all you do is close out this window. You don't have to click Save. That'll save to an external file, which we don't need to do here. So just close that out. And now we have our little editor here. We have Naïs Babes. We have our matrix. We're done. So you can click OK. And now we're going to run this. We're going to run our cost-sensitive classifier, which is basically going to run Naïve Bayes, which we picked. But it's going to use the penalties that we specified. So when we start that and run it, what we can see is uh, our accuracy has gone down. Our area under the curve is actually pretty good. But if we look here, we can see a big difference in what was classified. Um, so our items in B are doing really well, right? Most of our items in class B are now correctly classified. But wow, are we getting a lot of elements of A put in B and a lot of elements of C put in B. So we have solved the problem of B just being thrown into one of the other classes, but we maybe have overdone it a bit because we have basically halved the accuracy on our bigger classes, A and C. That would suggest that maybe we were too aggressive in the weights in our classifier. So if you want to change those, you can, again, just click on the text here, click on the text for the 3 by 3 cost matrix, and then adjust the weights. So maybe we'll change these from 10 to 5. Again, just close this window, and then click OK. Run it again. And now, just let's take a look at these correctly classified instances. Originally, we're getting 91.52, but that's artificially good because we suck to classifying B. Uh, with our penalties of 10, only 43% were correctly classified. That's not good. Now, with our penalties of 5, we've got 78% correctly classified. So that's a good result. Our area, un area under the curve looks good. And now if we look at our confusion matrix, we've gone back to doing pretty well on classes A and C. Most of them are correctly classified. And we've got almost half of our B instances being correctly classified here. So this is a pretty good result. Even though the accuracy is not as good as it was running this without a cost-sensitive classifier, we now actually have a model that's much more meaningful because it knows how to recognize elements of class B and it wasn't able to do that before. So you want to play around with these settings. You know, it's really dependent on your model, how bad the class imbalance is. Um, but it's a pretty straightforward way to give a little bit of extra consideration to those classes that are underrepresented and to make your model smarter.